Welcome back to my next playthrough series, this time Legendary Encounters, the X-Files deck building game. Alright, I have set everything up. I'm not going to go through the setup. You basically uh, build a conspiracy deck, very similar to uh, Legendary Encounters Alien deck building game. We're going to be playing through the first three seasons. How the game works is there's basically three games in here. You can play it as a campaign or a standalone. So we're going to do a standalone seasons one to three so that's what the conspiracy deck is built we have a strike deck very similar to the alien game which will be taking damage we have a not a barracks but it's a bureau this time uh, this time though something a little different in the game the bureau cards are face down because there are syndicate enemies hiding within the bureau cigarette smoking man being one of them so we have to scan the bureau to actually reveal uh, our the recruitment cards then we can recruit the cards uh, using recruitment points, or if it's a syndicate enemy, they're going to be doing bad things to us in the uh, bureau. Uh, each bureau space here has special abilities, so when you recruit a member from a specific location, you can do what it says here. So it says you may. So we have field officer transfer. So in the first space, you may put uh, the gain card on top of your deck. You can put the gain card on the bottom of your deck. You may gain a belief. We have belief cards, doubt cards. You can uh, defeat a doubt card in your discard pile, and you can heal the most recent strike. So very, uh, a lot of similarities between this and the alien game. So these all start out, so all shuffled, and into the bureau they go face down. And we need recruitment points to scan the bureau. And we're going to need attack points to scan the uh, conspiracy cards that come out in the shadows. So the gist of the game is we need to defeat the end game. The end game is the very last card in the conspiracy deck. And the evidence over here on this side, we have priority one, priority two, priority three, add special abilities to the end game. So what we want to do is find leads. I don't know, lots of information. You'll see it as we play. We're going to want to uncover the leads from the conspiracy deck in the shadows. The leads let us discover evidence and let us defeat the evidence basically which will deny the end game the special abilities probably easier said than done this is going to be somewhat of a blind playthrough i have not played this yet i've just received it recently i set it all up read through the rules a few times and we're just going to get into it i think it's going to be a lot of fun i do like the legendary system and the encounter system in particular we're going to be playing with of course Mulder and Scully. Comes with five characters, comes with Doggett, Reyes, uh, Skinner, uh, Mulder, and Scully. So you can play one to five players. We're going to be doing a two player game. Uh, oh, and I should say there are special agents which have the coordinate ability, very similar to the sergeants in the alien game. So without that, oh, with all that said, let's take a look at our two characters. So first up, we have Fox Mulder. And his belief is, I want to believe. It says, each player may defeat a doubt in their hand or discard pile. And if he gets a doubt that he has to play as trust no one, players can't coordinate or distress that strategy until the start of your next turn. So that's Mulder. And then we have Dana Scully, of course. And of course, they have a health value. And the defense may come into play during this playthrough. I'm not quite sure. I think there are some cards that attack our characters. Uh, for defense so uh, they both have a health of 12 defense of four her belief is uh, the truth is out there you get plus one attack for each defeated alien uh, enemy and her doubt is i <clears throat> i wish it were that simple each player defeats a belief in their hand or discard pile so of course belief cards are good things doubt cards are bad things so let's take a look and these are all the same so the belief cards i want to believe is draw a card and activate. The activate ability doesn't have to be resolved if you don't want it to, and it can be resolved pretty much any time on your turn after you play your cards. So you resolve your belief. Then defeat this card. You may only do this once per turn. So if you had two belief cards in your hand, you can only play one of them. The other one then at the end of your turn will go to your discard pile to show up later. Same with the doubt cards. And this is at the start of your action phase or if you draw this during your action phase resolve your doubt then defeat this card you may only do this once per turn so again if you had two doubt cards in your hand uh the rest you play one of them the others would go into your discard pile 
So, with all that long-winded introduction, uh, I think we're just going to get into the gameplay because then you will see how the game plays and we'll see if we can defeat the end game, which we don't even know what it is. I think it comes with nine or ten end games. There's nine priority one, nine priority two, nine priority three evidence. <clears throat> so that's going to mix up the game a little bit. You're never going to know quite what's going on. And we're going to be playing, there's going to be um, stuff happening from season one through three. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, and you can see on the cards here, there's a avatar rank. Uh, and the rank is the turn order. So Mulder's rank two and Scully's rank three. So Mulder's going to be going first. So let's come back and let's begin playing Legendary Encounters, the X-Files deck building game. Okay, so I'll probably do a couple of turns per uh, for this episode because we've done a bit of an introduction there. And let's get at it. So the first thing that happens on a turn, very similar to Aliens uh, game, is a conspiracy card goes into the shadows. And we'd need an attack four to scan it to see what's there. And they're basically, most of the conspiracy cards are going to be enemies, triggered or tied to the first three seasons. So, we don't have any coordinate cards at the moment because we have basic cards. And so I should show you the basic cards. And very similar again to Aliens. So for the basic cards, we each start with seven uh, field agents and five assault teams in our hand. Uh, and we're, there are no special cards for Fox Mulder or for Dana Scully, unlike the Alien game where each of the avatars had their own special card. So what we have for Fox Mulder here is he has one assault team, he has one, two, he basically has three assault teams and three avatars. So you can see the star symbols are for recruiting uh, or for uncovering in the bureau and the attack symbols are for defeating enemies or scanning the shadows. So Mulder has three and three so why don't we start right up here with the first uh, bureau card. We're going to scan this one here and we get data analysis. So this is a good card for us. This is not an enemy. Enemies have like a green border and you'll see that later on. So we get Pendrel. He's a three attack card costing six. Wow. Activate each time you scan a space in the shadows this turn draw a card. Ooh, that's a very cool card and it gives us three attack. Very powerful and if we uh, if we get gain him from here, you may heal your most recent strike. So that's a very powerful card shows up. However, it doesn't really do us much good because uh, Mulder just used his three scan ability, or three recruit to scan it. He has no recruit left. He has three attack left. It costs four attack to scan in the shadows. That's basically Mulder's turn. He's going to discard all of his cards, and then he would draw up six new cards for his next hand, which, of course is the rest of his 12 card starting deck. All right, that was basically Mulder's turn. Now let's go over and have Dana take a turn. Okay, let's have Dana take a turn. Well, she of course has six cards for her hand. Uh, and of course, nobody has coordinates yet. So Dana has uh, a field agent, assault, field agent, assault, field agent. And assault. So she also has three and three. But yes, I forgot. First thing you do on a turn, of course, is add a card to the shadows. Done. We have two now over there. All right. What are we going to do? Well, Dana has three recruit. And I think what Dana's going to do, she's going to recruit a special agent. And the special agents look like this. Uh, they give you two, two. They have a coordinate ability, which we see in the alien, which means you can play it on the other player's turn and add this to the other player. It has a little tech symbol. I'm not sure what it's called for X Files. Uh, and all of the special agents, there's five of them with the five different symbols on them, cost three. So Dana recruits special agent with her three recruit. She does have three attack, and with her three attack, she may as well scan this uh, conspiracy card. In the shadows and it is oh great an event time loss case file uh, we'll, we'll go through the number event choose a player to skip their next conspiracy and action phases um, they turn their avatar face down till the end of their next turn to help remember oh wow okay choose a player to skip their next conspiracy and action phases 
I think that's going to be, I think we're going to skip Mulder. He's going to go face down. Ah, uh, and that's pretty lame. And to the end of, until the end of their next turn. Wow. So basically Mulder is going to be skipping his next turn. This is not good. Now this gets discarded because it was an event that's happened. Uh, I'm just going to put that off the uh, side. Defeated conspiracy cards. Wow. And that's basically the end of Dana's turn. And so she's played everything she can play. She's going to discard all of her cards. She's going to drop a hand of six new cards, of course, which are going to be all basic cards still. And that's the end of Dana's turn. Well, that event didn't help us. Next, we're going to go back over to Mulder, who seems to be in a little bit of trouble. Okay, so just to show you in the book the phases. So right now it's Mulder's turn. He is going to be skipping, though, his conspiracy phase and action phase because of missing time event. So if we look at the turn sequence in the book, the conspiracy phase is draw the conspiracy card, keeping it hidden, add it to the shadows. Not going to happen. Action phase, play cards from your hand to scan, recruit, and fight. Not going to happen. We're going to go to immediately to the strike phase. Each enemy in the field strikes. There aren't any. Cleanup phase, discard your hand and all cards played, then draw six new cards. So basically what's happening for uh, Mulder is the six cards that he never got to play at all just get discarded and he's going to be shuffling and drawing a new hand. So he will then come back from his missing time and shuffle up his uh, discard, which I'll do kind of off screen. And back we go then to Dana Scully for her next turn. All right, back to Dana. And she has, of course, six more cards. And what are they going to be? Well, they're all her basic cards. She has three recruits and she has, oh, this time, sorry, she has four recruits and two attack because uh, it's the next turn. Now for her, she will get a conspiracy phase. So the conspiracy cards are going to keep shuffling out into the shadows. And over we go to Dana. Now she only has uh, two attack. So she cannot scan anything up here in the shadows because the lowest one is three. So her attack's not going to do her any good, but she has four recruit. So I think with one, she's going to scan. Oh, let's just scan this one here. And it says, haven't seen this for a while. This is Charles Burke's green fist symbol and it's a two attack card activate during your next conspiracy phase add the new enemy card directly to the field why would you want to do that um <laughs> maybe there's a uh, reason for doing this but usually when the cards come out in the field they flip over kind of like the combat zone and aliens and i don't think that's a great idea however it is a two attack card and she has three uh she has a total of four recruits. She used one to scan the bureau. She has three left. With three, she is going to recruit Burks. And there's a special ability here. You may put the gain card on top of your deck. Well, of course, she's going to do that because then she'll get that card for her next turn. Dana, doing pretty well. Another card, of course, comes face down into the bureau. The reason we're all face down in the bureau, I think I mentioned, is there are some syndicate enemies lurking around in the bureau and they do bad things to you when you figure out that they are there and you have to defeat them to get rid of them out of there and they block up a space all right that was dana's turn that was pretty good so she doesn't discard all of her cards she's going to drop six new cards which i'll shuffle and do that off screen i think for the rest of this episode we're going to have Mulder take one more turn scully take one more turn and we'll call it an episode for today all right, one more turn for Mulder, who's back from his missing time. So he will actually get a turn. All right, yes, first thing we do, we add a card to the shadows. Conspiracy card in the shadows, always not a good thing. Now, this time, Scully does have a coordinate card, and I think she's going to use it uh, for Mulder. Mulder's got one, two, three. He has three recruit and three attack, same as he had uh in his very first turn so three recruit three attack but dana is going to play this is dana's hand she does have a special agent which showed up uh, and so she'll play the special agent to coordinate with Mulder, giving him two extra recruit so i'm just going to leave that here because i don't want it to go into Mulder's discard pile and when you play a coordinate card you draw a card to replace it uh, very similar again to the aliens game which i keep mentioning because uh, it's a very similar system all right, that gives Mulder then a total of uh, 
five recruit this time. Two, five recruit, not quite enough to get um, Pendrel, which would have been awesome, but not happening right now. And he has one, two, three attack. With his three attack, he will scan this uh, conspiracy card in the shadows. And it is an enemy, a human spirit. Reveal, gain this card. Uh, really? And draw, put this card into the field. Okay, and it, oh shoot. So basically what's happening is uh, this card is going to be going into uh, Box Mulder's discard pile. And when he draws it, put this card into the field. It's going to go in the field uh, and you're going to need three recruit to get rid of it. So that's a kind of a cool mechanism. That goes into uh, Mulder's uh, discard pile. Okay, well that wasn't great. That was his three attack used. He still has five recruit. So I think we're going to once again scan the very first one. This will leave him four recruit. Oh, good stuff. And he can recruit this card immediately. Activate. You get plus one attack for each assault team you played this turn. Wow, that is actually very useful. Uh, and it costs four to recruit. He had five with the coordinate from Scully. You may put this card on top of your deck. Oh, of course. Mulder is going to put that card on top of his draw deck. And, yes, and he, that's the end of his, uh, his uh, ability to recruit from the Bureau. We replace the card immediately with a face down. Uh, Mulder's done everything he can do. Wow, that was pretty good. So he's going to discard all of his cards. He's going to drop six new ones, of course, two, three, four, five, six cards. And we already know one of them is this awesome card that he just got. That's going to be his hand for his next turn, which will be in the next episode. Up last for this episode. Uh, and yes, this coordinate card gets discarded to Scully's discard pile. And for, yeah, last turn for this episode, going to be Dana. And uh, that will be it. All right, up next, Dana Scully. And her hand, I think it's pretty good. Oh, yes, let's not forget, which I do tend to forget sometimes, to add a card to the shadows. Conspiracy card. We have three in the shadows now. All right, what does Dana have? Well, she has Charles Burks. Uh, she has a total of one, two, she has a total of two recruit, which she'd be able to scan something in the bureau. She has one, two, three. She has five attack. Five attack conspiracy and she can activate this card if she plays it during the next conspiracy phase the next conspiracy phase which would be Mulder's turn add the new enemy card directly to the field I don't know why you'd want to do that like I said this is kind of a blind playthrough I don't know why you'd want to immediately take a card from this conspiracy deck and put it in the field because once enemies are in the field they start giving you strikes uh, so, and the activates, you don't have to play the activate ability on a card, just so you know that. It's just available if you want to. Uh, so, in a nutshell, Scully has two um, recruit points. So, we might as well scan one in this location. And it is a Fulmer card. Uh, two attack, two recruit, look at the top card of the academy, you may defeat it. Ooh, that's pretty good for finding syndicate enemies. Okay, uh, and she has one recruit left. She might as well scan this one. Another Fulmer card. And it's two recruit activate. Choose a player to take the next turn. Uh, so you basically can go twice in a row if you want. Uh, and again, the activate abilities do not have to be played. Uh, Sting three, and this one could be put on the bottom of your draw deck. All right, well, we've got some uh, helpful people now available in the Bureau. And we have two, three, four, we have five attack. So with a five attack, we might as well scan the one in the location over here, which takes four attack. And we have an invisible UFO pilot, enemy alien. Uh, stealth, this enemy can't be fought in the shadows. Oh, come on. <laughs> Only takes two attack to kill it. But when it's up in the shadows here, it can't be fought. Darn it, so we have to wait till it gets in the field, then take it out. And that's the end of Dana's turn. So Scully is going to discard all of her cards. You know, up six new, one, two, three, four, five, six cards for her next hand. Did I get that right? Yes, I did. And that is going to be the conclusion of the first part 
of my X-Files Legendary Encounters playthrough. So, uh, I hope I'm not going to be making too many errors uh, in the playthrough. Like I said, just the game, and we want to find the leads. From the leads, will tell us what to do to uncover evidence. When we uncover the evidence, we want to discover the evidence, which takes the special ability away from the end game. We want to defeat the end game to win the game. Of course, uh, if we both get uh, annihilated and killed from strikes from the field, then you know we'll lose the game. So thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for your comments, subscriptions, likes. This is Legendary Encounters, the X-Files deck building game. We're playing uh, the first three seasons, one through three, and we're not doing it campaign style. I may do a campaign style after I do uh, this uh, in a later series. And yes, the videos will be coming out sporadically uh, as well. So they're not going to be one a day as per the normal. So once again, thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next episode.